What's going on folks? My name is Not Platimer and this is the Mango Pie MQ Pro. Uh, now, I've had this for a little while. This is the pink board that I got in its case still. It's Hardware Revision 1.4. Now this I'm showing off now as opposed to later when I can really be bothered doing a proper video because it also has a C906 1 GHz RISC-V core. The exact same, pretty much a different package, but the same uh, RISC-V core as the Milk V Duo, which we just looked at. Sorry about my hands floating all over the place there. This one is a little bit different though. Uh, it's got 512 meg of RAM and you can even get a one gig version, which is pretty insane. It's got a small case that comes in. You get a USB on the go adapter, which I think is pretty awesome. You even get a Wi-Fi antenna with it, which is sweet. And this is the board. As you can see, it is actually slightly bigger than the, there we go. So that's the Milk V Duo next to it if my camera wants to focus. And you see it is a little bit bigger, but I don't have a problem with that because this also has HDMI and it's got USB-C host and USB-C on the go. It's then got the standard 40 pin uh, Pi header, essentially the Pi 2 header, I think they call it. And along with that, supports your normal TF slash SD card. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in. Uh, it's got a DSi connector and it's pretty awesome as far as I can tell, but I haven't actually tried it. So you can see on the back as well, you can add your own uh, NAND storage if need be. And it's got the external antenna connector there. I'm Look, I'm impressed with it on paper, but I haven't tried to use it and I haven't actually seen how easy it is to use. What it doesn't come with is an SD card. So I'm gonna follow in the instructions now and I'll probably put some pictures up on the screen and just try to flash this and see how easy or hard it is. All right, that's pretty awesome. It's got four lane MIPI DSi, which means you can actually use some of the higher frame rate or higher resolution um, connectors, uh, cameras with it, which is something that interests me, of course, because I'm playing with a few other things like the 64 megapixel Arju cam and uh, their global shutter camera and whatnot. Downloading that image there, you can see they've got a jammy base 5.19 with XFC, which is pretty solid. And it looks like it's, it is closer to an SBC or an ESBC than anything else we've looked at. So one of the arguments that a lot of people have had is that an SBC, a single board computer, needs input output, it needs video. Now, I am arguing that this is still an SBC or an ESBC on the grounds that you do have input output via uh, the serial connection, which is equivalent to you know the old computers where you had a two color DOS screen connected to it. You can theoretically uh, have display out through this connector, of course, to a um, TFT screen or something like that. But then you've also just got the option of using a uh, like a DVI adapter. There's a couple, quite a different few different projects out there where as long as you've got 252 megahertz of processing, uh, three PIOs on one channel, where you can theoretically hook up DVI or HDMI to one of these. But either way. You've got SSH to it, which is a form of input out. You've got direct input out through the serial. You've got USB, so you can hook up a keyboard and mouse if need be, even though that's over serial anyway. And you've got networking functionality built into this one or with Wi-Fi or some of the other. So I'd say for all the haters and naysayers, it's still an SBC, but I'd say this goes just that little bit closer. So let's grab that image, flash it, and just see how quickly it boots up. Uh, you might note as well, as I had a look at before, the wireless built-in is wireless N, but all good. Alrighty, this is part two of the Mango Pi MQ Pro. Now, last time we started downloading the firmware, that's going to take ages and then it wouldn't boot. Turns out the firmware had failed to actually download it. So now we've downloaded it and we've flashed this SD card. I'm not going to show you how to flash that. It's using Belina Etcher like normal. Now we've got this set up with the SD card in there. I've then got a uh, mini or micro HDMI to full size HDMI going to my laptop just so we can see what's going on with OBS. I've then got uh, my US, just this USB-C hub here, and um, I'm using my Pine Power power supplier to power it through that uh, OTG port. Uh, this is just a cheap USB 2 bit type A to C cable, which is actually like a fabric braid. I like the look of it. Um, I got a pile of them recently. I've got a couple on my store for like seven bucks if you want them. Link down below as usual. But now we're just going to turn it on and have a look at what it actually does, and we'll be recording it in OBS on here so we can see real time what's going on. Yeah, so we're gonna do this one-handed in a very Cody's Lab janky style. Use protection, kids, and by that I mean ESD protection. So, this is gonna be recording. 
Let's get nah crap. Start recording. There we go. This does take a moment for the hardware to initialize and then we're off to the races. I also forgot to do this because it's going to take a hot minute to boot anyway. Now, this is, as you saw, the pink board. I already forget if I mentioned it in the first video, um, which I recorded weeks ago. I've just been so busy. Pink is the is the version 1.3 and the version 1.4, which is what they're considering final. Uh, the other versions were different colours. They might change it in the future. Who knows? <clears throat> but that is um, that is the colour for now. Uh, now I'm running the uh, Ubuntu image they've got there called Nerds. I don't know. It starts with an N. Um, there is another one called Tina Linux. They don't recommend it. It's their like custom janky build. So there are other images you can put your own together as well. Um, as usual, there's not much doco, but there is some stuff on GitHub that I'll link to below, and it kind of guides you through a little bit of that process, but if you're going to be using this for anything production or reliable, just use the Ubuntu image, um, and if you get the 5.12 meg version, don't try to use the UI, as you'll see shortly, it hurts, uh, stick to the CLI version. With the 1 gig RAM, you're probably fine with the CLI version. Now, this is also the C906, which is the all-winner D1, uh, it's actually the first Risk V processor, uh, Risk V processor, I believe they made, uh, but it's based on that that um, C906, same as the Buffalo BL808 that the Ox64 uses, but this seems to be a little bit more fully implemented, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, sharing is caring, folks. It is also what I'd absolutely consider an ESBC. If we have a look at this form factor again, I'll just cut back there. Uh, it is everything that makes a, a computer. It's got input and output. Uh, it's got storage. It's got processing. It's got network connectivity through Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and probably even LAN if you plugged in a uh, adapter. Oh, it's finally birded, uh, as you can see. Nice big Risk Five logo. It is um, Pi Zero sized. It is E as in embedded. It is bloody tiny. So I'm calling this the best definition of an ESBC. Yeah. Back to what's at hand, it is most likely still doing stuff, so we're going to jump over and have a look at the console, because it's busy for a minute after it starts up. That's right, Armbin 22.08, based on Jamie that they call Nezha. Uh, probably pronounced that wrong, just like this keyboard. Seems to hit repeated keystrokes, or give me repeated keystrokes all the time. Uh, so... It draws stuff all. I haven't seen it draw more than 200 milliamps. Um, I've powered it with Quick Quiet Charge 3 with standard USB 5 volts. I've tried uh, PD as well, but it, it's happy with 5 volts and it draws nearly nothing. Now, first things, as always, we want to have a look at. I've got the 512 meg version, and you can see uh, it's using about half of that as a cache. We can chew through that very quickly if we try logging in, though. Um, you can see there we've got our petitions as usual, and as you saw on boot, we are it is using the Ambien um, kind of storage management because this is on an SD card. Uh, System D analyze blame because it's on an SD card. You really don't want to be wearing out those write cycles. So what it does is uh, stores like a lot of frequent writes, um, like log files, in RAM and then just writes them at shutdown. So if we run system D analyze blame here, we'll be able to have a look at how long those take to start because they are pretty hefty processes, but they save your SD card. Also, this is a slow SD card. Um, I've got the slowest, cheapest SD card possible. Um, I would thoroughly recommend getting a, v, uh, a V3, like a, a 90 megabyte a second sort of card. This is, I'd be lucky to get 10 megabytes a second on this one. Um, it's just one I had hanging around now. Apparently the MQ Pro is actually a little bit limited in the SD speed it can do as well. It beats the Pi Zero W in nearly all benchmarks, except for the SD card speed, which was interesting. Um, I'll leave a link to that uh, benchmark below that I had a look at, but you can see here it's doing all right. Now, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, it does need to be optimized a bit, I think. I've already disabled Bluetooth, Cups, and Host APD, because I don't need them but they were there by default. And if we log in here, we can have a quick look at how the UI goes. It's running XFCE, which is nice and light, of course. Uh, this does have a GPU that can do hardware decoding. I don't know if that's enabled in this build or not, but the option's there. Uh, it swaps hard, though. It is swapping so hard, and it's possibly overheating a bit, so we'll have a look in a moment at that. 
when you do first boot it, I've already rebooted it a few times as I told you, but when you do first boot it, it goes through the norm, normal ambient setup, so username, time zone, expands to fill the SD card, uh, gets your Wi-Fi details, does any updates, that sort of stuff. Whilst we're waiting on that, let's have a right, CPU info. Yeah, there's not much going on there, but yeah, it's the C906, so let's have a look at uh sys devices system cpu cpu zero cpu frequency cpu info max frequency all right one gigahertz what's the current frequency one gigahertz all right now that login banner also told me the temperature was about 54 c i don't know how true that is but i'm very curious Especially now if we jump back to console 7. Yeah, CPU's maxed out, it's struggling a bit. <clears throat> Policy kit, poll kit D, is um, what's going to be killing it. 53C. Let's um, jump over to the Top Don thermal camera and have a quick look there. All right, that took me a hot minute because I've just started reorganizing um, some of my storage here and it's all in a different spot. I think it looks really cool, but I don't know where anything is anymore. So I need a bit more. I'm starting to put some components in there, but uh, one day. So we've got that on now. We'll give it some time to heat up. But as you can see back over here, we have our user interface and the CPU is still really being smashed. So let's have a quick squeeze here at what's going on. Polk it, as I said, and LSB release for whatever reason. It's done with this thing. You can see it's swapping hard. We knew that was going to happen. Now, it does also come with... CPU is doing well. With this test MP4 file, I'm going to assume on the one gig version that this works. Um, same as browsing the internet with this god-awful tiny little browser. But with this 512 meg version, as limited as that is, it... Uh, well, last time it got killed by OOM out of memory. Oh, oh, it's getting further this time. Let's get rid of all these other things on the screen, see if it wants to... Oh, it's trying so hard. Is OEM going to nuke it or what? Yep, nuked by OEM. So, let, OEM. so let's um, get rid of that browser, see if that gives us a little bit more. We'll try a second time. And then we'll have another look at the uh, the temperature now. This heatsink's had a bit of time to do its work. And I actually just pinched the heatsink from its tiny brother, the M Core, which comes with heatsinks. This one doesn't. Um, <clears throat> they really should do like a 1 and a 2 gig RAM version of this, I reckon, especially if their default image is going to have a UI. Without the UI, it seems to consume nearly nothing. No. OM'd again. I reckon if we had a look uh, there. Yep. Straight away. Killed process, VLC. It was consuming a lot. So... Having a look back now, let's switch back to, actually, let's quickly check on that temperature, just the really lazy way, log in again and see what the screen says. See if it's dropped below, what was it, 50 or so? Still says 50. All right, let's have a look with the thermal camera. Now, the last thing that really had me curious then, is this actually has, oh, we didn't see if it's RAMs any warm. Let's do that in a tick. But it's got all these pads here. Um, like it can take some SPI flash. Now, uh, QSPI can do up to 40 megabytes a second, which would be way faster than most SD cards you got lying around. It would be up to the device tree being configured for it and U-Boot picking it up. But uh, I've got some lying around here. So I might just quickly solder one on and see what happens. All right, I've got my nice new solder grippy arms and this little flush memory chip, uh, SPI flash. So let's um, slap her on there, see how it goes. Back in a moment. 
Well, that nearly looks like it was done by a professional if I didn't dirty a little bit first and then accidentally stab myself with a soldering iron. But I think I got it the right way around. I'm assuming dot in, in dot corner. Um, now let's hope that it does work and that I got the use case right, as I really hope, I would expect that I did, um, and hope that it all works. Uh, I don't know if it'll pick it up. As I said, it depends on a lot, but interesting either way. All right, it's plugged back in. The green light is on. Let's see if it gives me a picture. That is the first. Oh, we've got a picture. Oh, oh. All right, somewhere in there, we might have seen it. Um, otherwise, I'll have to have a look through uh, maybe LS block. Um, see what it shows up as, what's happening there. All right, definitely do not need a UI for this. Kill it as quick as we can. There's probably a keyboard shortcut for it. I forget all these things. I used to be an everyday Linux user. Um, it's been a while. Oh, temperature is 45C now, so that's, that's definitely made a difference. Did that kill Xorg? Ah, I suppose it's going to restart itself. All right, so... No, we're not seeing it there. It might not be configured in the device tree. Um, I don't know why I'm expecting it under there. There's no PCI devices. Wouldn't show up as USB. Um, Yeah, it should it should be showing up there, if anything. It's not like it's configured to give itself more RAM. Um, that bloody keystroke. Hmm, slightly different layout than I'm used to. Um, they've modified this slightly. But we can probably create an environment file there and enable it. For now, at least, it still works. I'm not sure exactly what the use case would be, but I'm probably going to play around with this a little bit because I like the idea um, that we can make use of that. I'll have to dig through some of the code, and if I figure out how to make this work, whether it's just um, enabling in the device tree or maybe some slight changes or even just LS modding something, um, uh, ins modding a module that I haven't thought of, we'll give it a shot. For now, that is the... Mango Pi MQ Pro, which is a one gigahertz single core Risk V processor using the uh, All Winner D1, which is a C906 core. Um, it is an embedded SBC. It is a tiny computer that's probably even more reliable than the Pi Zero W because apparently they other people's die as often as mine do. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, thumbs up, subscribe, do all those fun things that YouTube really wants you to do. It's late as hell here, so I'm going to go home and have some dinner. Um, and get this video out to make the algorithm gods happy. And I'll catch you guys next time. Cheers. See ya.